many of you all have come like a jillion years in a row? Aren't, aren't you in love with this weather today? Yeah. I noticed that it's under 6,000 degrees. So I am uh, I'm a poet, and, and Mike mentioned singing. I'm not allowed to sing. Um, I'm the only guy in our whole church that when they say, please turn to uh, hymn number 17 except for Gary. So I don't sing, but I do do some poems. And I'm going to do the first poem here that was originally written as a poem. Most people know it now as a song. It was written by um, Badger Clark. And the first published date that I know of it is 1906. It could be before that, but that's the earliest one I know. This is a poem by the name of A Border Affair. Well, Spanish is the loving tongue. It's soft as silver, light as spray. There was a girl I learned it from, living down Sonora Way. Now, I don't look much like a lover. Still, I say her love words over, mostly when I'm all alone. Mi amor, mi corazón. Oh, there were nights when I would ride and she would listen for my spurs and swing that big door open wide and raise those laughing eyes of hers. And oh, how my heart would near stop beating when I'd hear her tender greeting whispered low for me alone. Mi amor, mi corazón. Moonlight on the patio, old senora nodding near. Me and Juana talking low so her madre wouldn't hear. And oh, how those hours would get to flying. Till pretty soon I'd hear her crying, please don't leave me all alone. Mi amor, mi corazón. Well, then one night I had to fly. I got into a foolish gambling fight. I had to bid a swift goodbye in that black unlucky night. And traveling north, her words kept ringing. With every hoofbeat, I heard her singing, Please don't leave me all alone, Mi amor, mi corazón. Well, I ain't seen her since that night. I can't cross the line, you know. She was Mex, I was white. Like as not, it's better so. But still, somehow, I've sort of missed her. Since that last night, I kissed her. Oh, I broke her heart. But I lost my own. Adios, mi corazón. Badger Clark, 1906. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I have written a poem that I tried to make relatively historically accurate uh, about some, some major figures in, uh, in the American West. So I hope you get a kick out of this one. Wyatt Herp and Doc Holliday were in the Palace Saloon. Well, they figured they'd have them a couple of drinks. You know, it was long about noon. So Doc calls out to the barkeep, two glasses, a bottle of rye. Well, the gar barkeep is there at the table, quick as the blink of an eye. Then the barkeep, he says to old Wyatt, your special order, it come in today. Well, Wyatt says, forget the whiskey and take them glasses away and make us that special concoction. The one that they say is all the rage, you know, the, the one that you learned from that dandy, that feller you met on the stage, and make it just like he told you, like the swells drink in old Tennessee. Oh, we may be out here in Prescott, but we're gentlemen, Doc, here in me. Well, that barkeep, he got busy mixing, using that special nut liqueur that Wyatt had bought. And folks, he chopped up some ice for the glasses. And in Prescott, that said quite a lot. Well, he brought them drinks to the table. Wyatt and Doc, they each took a drink. And Wyatt says, my, that's refreshing. Tell me, Doc, what do you think? Doc spit his drink on the floorboards. Said, my God, tastes like an old miner's sock. What in the world are we drinking? Wyatt said, it's a hickory daiquiri, Doc. I know it. Full-grown men worked that hard to make that stuff rhyme. 
But now I know what kind of crowd you are. Billy pulled his pickup on the two lane. He had his one horse trailer in tow. See, he was headed off to Silver City down in southern New Mexico. Well, they was having a big old roping. So he figured he'd go and loop him some heels and maybe he'd win him a big old check. You know, or enough for his gas and his meals. Now, Billy is one heck of a cowboy. He's known as a whale of a hand and his prowess with horses and cattle why, it's legend throughout the land. And he's known for his roping and riding, his skill at driving a team. But when it comes to driving a car or a truck, he's the slowest man you ever seen. As he'd be driving along them old two lanes, he'd be checking out pastures and grass. He'd be sizing up horses and cattle. And, well, folks, you can't do that while driving too fast. Now, this here trip started off uneventful. He just dawdled along down the road. He was passed by cars, trucks, and buses, two snakes and one horny toad. But there weren't no reason to hurry. See, he was doing what he loved to do. He was taking himself to a roping and singing along with old Chris Ledoux. Then Billy glanced into his rear view. What he saw caused a terrible fright. The car that was back there behind him was two-toned black and white. Well, Billy took off like a rabbit, hit a hundred in a blink of an eye. He was sure enough off to the races. He nearly made that old pickup fly. Now that cop, he'd known Billy forever, so he knew that something weren't right. Oh my God, poor Billy's been kidnapped. I'll save him from his sorry plight. So the cop grabbed onto his two-way. He called out for backup and such. He called in two helicopters. He said some roadblocks might not be too much. Folks, them cops, they chased Billy for hours, for many and many a mile, and old Billy was like Richard Petty, showing courage, finesse, and style. He'd cut out around them old roadblocks. He was a dust-slinging, four-wheeling fool. And them cops, well, they didn't catch Billy till his pickup had run out of fuel. Now, their approach on his truck was real careful. With shotguns and pistols, they aimed when they saw that Billy was all by himself, they thought that the boy had gone insane. He was handcuffed and thrown in a squad car, then asked why he'd done what he'd done. Did he think that leading a high-speed pursuit was really the right kind of fun? Well, when Billy explained why he'd done it, they released him. Just let him go free. Well, see, they all knew Billy and most knew his wife, so his story made sense, don't you see? Seems Billy's wife had run off with the sheriff. He had caught him last week in the sack. And when he saw that old squad car, it scared him. He thought the sheriff was bringing her back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I would like to do uh, one more in this little batch here, and then I'll come back and do some more later. Um, this is another poem that I didn't write. Uh, that's because I wasn't around in 1907. Um, at least I wasn't writing in 1907. And this is a poem by S. Omar Barker, and it's called Another Way of Proposing. Oh, Sue was young, and Sue was fair, and Sue was trim and neat. She helped out her old crippled pa by serving stuff to eat to... Hungry cowboys drifted in from tendon stock all weary, and most of us hankered hard to have Sue for our dearie. Most specially young bashful Bert, a top hand with the herd, but too ungodly bashful to attempt a courtin' word. Well, she turned the rest of us plumb down, so sweet it hardly hurt. And then we seen the way it was. She hankered after Bert. And him all blush and bashfulness, the poor cow punch and sinner, he already had her won and was still too dumb to win her. Well, then one day a drummer guy breezed in for noonday's chow and he barked about the service like he was hankering for a row. Now the fare was beans and mighty fine, I know, for I was there. But still this uppish drummer boy just bowed his neck and pawed the air, shoved back his plate, plumb unpolite, said I ain't no hired help. Bring me some food that's civilized. Oh, you should have heard him yelp. Well, poor Sue got all be flustered. 
Then Bert riz up in his jeans, drawed out his gun, and calmly says, Stranger, eat them beans. And, and then Sue looks up at Doran, and towards Bert she kinder leans, till all at once he kisses her, and that stranger ate them beans. S. Omar Barker, 1907. Thank you all very much.